Hey there students, in today's video we're going to be talking about how to record adjusting entries for deferrals. We're going to talk about what is a deferral, go through examples of different types of deferrals, then go through a big problem where I'm going to show you how to record journal entries for deferrals, then adjusting entries. Let's get into it. So first off, what is a deferral? Well, what I want you to think about is something that is paid or received but isn't recorded as an expense or a re revenue or excuse me, revenue yet on the income statement. So think about something you get or you pay but it's not expensed right now. It's actually recorded either as an asset or a liability at this point. Only when time passes or something is consumed, you record it as a revenue or expense. So that's how it looks. Now, once again, let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger here. So once again, you don't record it yet as an expense or revenue. It's pushed for it's pushed back, really, pushed to the future. You don't record it yet as an expense or revenue. Now, some examples. You've seen some of this stuff before. Prepaid insurance. Make sure I got that. Uh, prepaid advertising. Now, this is interesting. Tutoring. So if you pay a tutor up front, let's say a week in advance. That right there is actually prepaid tutoring for you. You can consider it an asset because you have not consumed it yet. He has not provided or he or she has not provided the service yet. So you actually don't have to record it as an expense yet. It's just prepaid. It's kind of like prepaid credit cards. I don't know if you've ever seen those before, but you can pay and put money on a credit card in advance. And as you use it, it depletes. But when you buy that credit card up front and put money on it, it's an asset to you. Not until you start using it is when it slowly becomes an expense and you start to use it up. Other things like subscription services. So Netflix is a perfect example. When your billing cycle goes through and you get billed on day one of that month, that subscription service is actually an asset to you because you haven't used it yet. The month hasn't happened. So on day one, you can actually consider it an asset not an expense. Pretty interesting, right? Same with rent. When you pay for your apartment every month, on day one, it's actually an asset to you. It's not an expense yet because you haven't used that rent up, right? So on day one, you can consider it an asset. Maybe that'll make you feel better about paying rent every month. So when you pay month or day one of that month, it's considered prepaid. It's an asset. Another one is supplies. You see that all the time in, um, in accounting, supplies, and even groceries. Same kind of thing. You buy it up front, you pay for it up front, but as you eat those groceries over time, that's when it's slowly expensed. And at the very end, you have to make an adjusting entry because you defer it to the future. Right now, it's an asset, but you defer it to the future when you start to... Um, use it up and consume it, that's when you make an adjusting entry. So let's take a look at an example. So this is going to be a full problem showing you how this company will treat this um, item. So on March 1st, 2021, Genie Corp purchased six months of insurance in advance. So they bought it up front for its manufacturing facility, $3,600. What entry is recorded on March 1? And what entry must be recorded on June 1st when they make that adjustment? So on March 1, you're actually going to debit prepaid insurance because you're buying that insurance up front for the next six months. Right now, it's considered an asset, not an expense. And you're buying it for $3,600. Then you credit cash for $3,600. You pay for it, right? So cash goes down, prepaid insurance goes up. Now, on June 1st, right, how much time has passed? That's always the question you got to ask yourself. How much time has passed? The answer is three months, March, April, May. 
It's June 1st now, so three months. So half of that period, three over six, right? Because you bought six months worth. Three over six is what has passed. That's what you've consumed of that asset. So let's do a formula. Three over six, and we're gonna multiply it times the total amount, 3,600. So this is how much time has passed, how much you've consumed. You've consumed $1,800 of it, right? Half of that insurance amount, six months, has been consumed, right? March, April, May. So the journal entry, the adjusting entry for that deferral is gonna be a debit, and you're actually gonna say, Insurance expense, that's how much you used of 1800 and you're gonna credit prepaid insurance. So prepaid insurance is actually going down for that amount. So insurance expense goes up, prepaid insurance goes down because prepaid insurance is depleting, right? So that right there is how you record the original entry and the adjusting entry for that deferral. So went through a lot today. We talked about what are deferrals, the definition of it, talked about different examples of it so you can kind of relate it to the real world. And then we went through a huge example from A to Z, showed you how to record the original entry and how to record the adjusting entry for that deferral. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It helps support the channel. And be on the lookout. I'm gonna be re actually releasing two new videos every single week from now on to help you out with accounting. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.